this is our globe. And down here south in white, you can see the seventh continent Antarctica. What the map does not show is how frigid and vast the area exactly is. Another thing you might not notice from the map is the quantity of discoveries that are taking place in this cold and secluded region of our planet. Despite the difficult conditions, scientists are hard at work in Antarctica, and many of the discoveries they have made recently are scary. In this video, we present you the most disturbing new discoveries made beneath the ice of Antarctica. To fully acknowledge these scientific discoveries, some knowledge about the cold continent Antarctica is essential. The continent of Antarctica comprises the majority of the Antarctic area and is the fifth largest continent in terms of landmass with an area of 14 million square kilometers or 5.5 million square miles. This means that Antarctica is nearly twice the size of Australia and larger than Europe. And, despite being called a continent, Antarctica lacks a single country. However, several countries have claimed sovereignty over certain parts of the ice-cold continent. Those countries are Australia, New Zealand, Norway, the UK, Chile, Argentina, and France. While some of these countries have mutually recognized one another's claims, the validity of the claims is not universally recognized and new claims of the icy continent have been suspended since 1959. Antarctica, as you probably know, is the home to huge masses of ice. It is dominated by the Antarctic Ice Sheet, the world's largest single solid block of ice. Surprisingly, the surface area of the ice increases dramatically from roughly 3 million square kilometers or 1.2 million square miles to 19 million square kilometers or 7.3 million square miles during the winter. But what if Antarctica didn't have any ice at all? How would the continent look like? Without ice, Antarctica would form a massive peninsula and archipelago of mountainous islands known as Lesser Antarctica as well as a single enormous continent around the size of Australia known as Greater Antarctica. The geology of these areas varies. Greater Antarctica, also known as East Antarctica, is made up of older igneous and metamorphic materials. Lesser Antarctica, sometimes known as West Antarctica, is composed of younger volcanic and sedimentary materials. Lesser Antarctica is, in fact, part of the Pacific Ocean's Ring of Fire, a tectonically active region. Tectonic activity is the movement of plates in the Earth's crust, which frequently results in earthquakes and volcanoes. Mount Erebus, on Antarctica's Ross Island, is the world's southernmost active volcano. The majority of lesser Antarctica's islands and archipelagos are volcanic and extensively glaciated. They also have a lot of tall mountains. The oceans that surround Antarctica are an essential physical component of the region. The waters around Antarctica are relatively deep, reaching depths of 4,000 to 5,000 meters or 13,000 to 16,000 feet. However, the climate in Antarctica is very cold, harsh and dry, making it an extremely uninhabitable place to live. The average winter temperature along Antarctica's coast ranges from minus 10 to minus 30 degrees Celsius or 14 to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Coastal locations in the summer have temperatures that range from 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 9 degrees Celsius or 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures in the mountainous interior parts are substantially cooler dropping below minus 60 degrees Celsius or minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit in winter and minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. The coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was minus 89.2 degrees Celsius or minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit in 1983 at Russia's Vostok Research Station. Using satellite data from 2010, an even lower temperature was measured, minus 94.7 degrees Celsius or minus 138.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The Antarctic region is crucial to global climate systems. It is an essential component of the Earth's thermal balance. The heat balance, also known as the energy balance, is the ratio between how much solar heat is received by the Earth's atmosphere and how much heat is reflected back into space. Antarctica plays a larger role in maintaining Earth's heat balance than most other continents. Ice reflects more light than land or ocean surfaces. The vast Antarctic ice sheet reflects a significant amount of solar radiation away from the Earth's surface. The reflectance of the Earth's surface diminishes when global ice cover, ice sheets and glaciers, declines. This allows more incoming solar radiation to be absorbed by the Earth's surface, resulting in an imbalanced heat balance associated with global warming. The current phase of climate change Interestingly, NASA scientists discovered that climate change has resulted in increased ice formation in some places of Antarctica. They claim that this is due to new climate patterns caused by climate change. These patterns combine to form a powerful wind pattern known as a polar vortex. Polar vortex winds drop Antarctic temperatures and have grown in strength in recent decades, increasing by up to 15% since 1980. However, this effect is not apparent throughout Antarctica, as some areas are seeing ice melt. Let's talk about the flora and fauna of the Antarctic region for a brief moment. 
lichens, mosses, and terrestrial algae are among the few plant species found in Antarctica. The northern and coastal sections of Antarctica have more of this vegetation, while the interior has little to no vegetation. The ocean, on the other hand, is teeming with fish and other aquatic life. The waters surrounding Antarctica are, in reality, among the most diverse on the globe. Upwelling promotes the growth of phytoplankton and algae. Thousands of species, including krill, feed on plankton. In the chilly Antarctic waters, fish and a wide diversity of marine mammals flourish. Antarctica has healthy populations of blue, fin, humpback, right, mink, say, and sperm whales. Another highly fascinating animal home to the Antarctic region is the leopard seal. The leopard seal is one of Antarctica's top predators, is one of the most ferocious marine predators. This 3 meter or 9 feet, 400 kilogram or 882 pound animal has extraordinarily long, powerful teeth that it uses to tear through prey such as penguins and fish. The penguin, however, is undoubtedly the most well-known Antarctic mammal. They have perfect adaptations for the chilly, coastal waters. Their wings act as flippers as they fly across the water in pursuit of prey such as squid and fish. Their feathers maintain a layer of air, which helps them stay warm in the frigid water. Humans have been fascinated with the Antarctic for a long time and although the Antarctic does not host permanent residents, the region is a busy outpost for a variety of research experts. These scientists are from a variety of countries and operate at government-sponsored research facilities. The number of scientists conducting study fluctuates from roughly 1,000 in the winter to around 5,000 in the summer. Researchers from a wide range of scientific disciplines study the Antarctic not only as a distinct habitat, but also as an indicator of greater world dynamics. The surface of the world's coldest and most remote continent is being mapped by geographers. Meteorologists investigate climate patterns, such as the ozone hole above Antarctica. Climatologists use ice cores from Antarctica's pristine ice sheet to reconstruct Earth's climate history. Marine biologists examine whale, seal, and squid behavior. Astronomers conduct studies from the interior of Antarctica because it provides the best view of space from Earth. Even astrobiologists, who research the possibility of life beyond Earth's atmosphere, analyze Antarctic minerals. A meteorite from Mars was discovered in Antarctica in 1984. The marks on this meteorite resembled those left by microbes on Earth. If this millions-of-year-old meteorite contains the remains of Martian bacteria, it would be the only scientific evidence for life beyond Earth. Organic molecules in the rock believed to have been left by living beings, according to a NASA-led team in 1996. But, other scientists were doubtful, and researchers hammered away at that premise over the years, most recently by a team led by Andrew Steele of the Carnegie Institution for Science. Scientist Dr. Steele believes the carbon-rich compounds in the meteorite are the consequence of water, most likely salty or brackish water, passing over the rock for an extended period of time. According to the researchers, tiny globs of carbon were created by groundwater seeping through crevices in the rock while it was still on Mars. They claim that the same process can happen on Earth and that it could help explain the existence of methane in Mars' atmosphere. Let's now dive into another recent and highly frightening discovery in the Antarctic region. What did the researchers find? Well, what they discovered was shocking to them. The scientists discovered the presence of a secret hidden world under the Antarctic ice. The researchers found a complex ecosystem that was flourishing more than 1,600 feet below the surface of the icy continent. They discovered the hidden subterranean ecosystem beneath the Larsen Ice Shelf. The Larsen Ice Shelf is a massive floating sheet of ice linked to the Antarctic Peninsula's eastern coast that generated the world's largest iceberg last year. Satellite images revealed an unusual groove in the ice shelf near where it met the land, which researchers identified as a subsurface river, as stated in a statement. To reach the underground chamber, the team excavated roughly 1,640 feet or 500 meters below the ice's surface with a strong hot water hose which allowed them to melt their way towards the hidden underground chamber. When the researchers sent a camera down the freezing tunnel and into the cavern, the video feed was blocked by hundreds of tiny, fuzzy flakes in the water. Initially, the crew suspected that their equipment was defective. They discovered the lens was being besieged by small crustaceans known as amphipods after refocusing the camera. This surprised the researchers because they had not expected to find any form of life this far beneath the frozen surface. Having all those animals swimming around our camera means there's clearly an important ecosystem process happening there. Craig Stevens, a physical oceanographer at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in Auckland, New Zealand, said in the statement, the discovery of the secret shrimp-infested structure had the team jumping up and down for joy. Stevens added, after dropping the camera into the river, the team was astonished to see that the cavern looked nothing like they had predicted. The researchers had anticipated that the chamber's roof would be smooth and flat. Instead, they discovered that the roof was extremely uneven, with numerous steep undulations. Nearer the roof, the cavern was likewise significantly wider. 
It looked like a loaf of bread, with a bulge at the top and narrow slope at the bottom, Stevens said. The scientists aim to learn more about how the nutrients in the water are cycled through Antarctica's underground water networks to support the amount of life that dwells there as they continue to research the newfound subsurface ecosystem. Recently researchers got surprised by another new discovery. Earlier we talked about the different animals that are home to the icy continent. But what we didn't tell you is that researchers recently discovered pigs in this secluded region. Yes pigs, you've heard it correctly, but not those pigs you are thinking of. Instead these Antarctic pigs, nicknamed sea pigs, are a certain type of sea cucumber, specifically a member of the genus Scotoplanes. Whereas most of us are accustomed to seeing sea cucumbers that resemble cucumbers in shape, Scotoplane species such as Esclabosa truly resemble pigs. These plump, pink creatures with rather porky legs bulldoze their way across the deep ocean floor, devouring trash and sometimes dead whales. They are weirdly fascinating creatures. Sea cucumbers are germs, a type of marine invertebrate that also includes sea urchins and starfish. They are not only found in Antarctica, but also in the world's oceans. In fact, in some locations, they account for more than 95% of the total weight of deep sea species. They, like other sea cucumbers, are members of the phylum Echinodermata, which also includes sea stars, brittle stars, and sea urchins. Even though pink-skinned sea pigs appear cuddly, the term Echinodermata refers to the rough skins that sea cucumbers have. They are sometimes even translucent. The small piglets, on the other hand, fit the Echinodermatic design of five body portions arranged around a central axis. They all have the same parts as sea stars, but they're arranged differently. There appear to be a half dozen or more known species, though images of them are tough to come by. Our pig pals, like other sea cucumbers, absorb food via a ring of tentacles surrounding the mouths at the front end. They also continue their sea cucumber business of consuming seafloor silt, filtering out algae and debris, and excreting inorganic material. In most other sea cucumbers, that would be sand. For our pig pals, the abyssal plain is made up of mud and sludge. Sometimes our small buddies are lucky and receive a gift from above, such as a whale fall, or the sinking carcass of a dead whale. They assemble with other deep marine species such as worms and crabs to have a seafloor picnic. Antarctica is a fascinating place, but although it is so remote and so far away from modern civilization, scientists now have come across something they hoped they wouldn't see in this secluded region, a lot of microplastic. The continual discovery of microplastics in seemingly pristine areas of the Earth adds critical detail to a frightening picture of widespread contamination, and the latest discovery takes the threat into new territory. But what are microplastics exactly? Microplastics are, as the name suggests, small plastic particles. Officially, they are described as polymers with a diameter of less than 5 millimeters, smaller in diameter than a conventional pearl used in jewelry. Microplastics are classified into two types, main and secondary. Microfibers shed from clothing and other textiles, such as fishing nets, are examples of primary microplastics. Secondary microplastics are particles that form when bigger plastic items, such as water bottles, degrade. This disintegration is produced by exposure to environmental elements, specifically sunlight and ocean waves. The issue with microplastics is that, like all plastics, they do not easily degrade into harmless molecules. Plastics can take hundreds or thousands of years to disintegrate, wreaking havoc on the environment in the meantime. Microplastics are apparent on beaches as small colorful plastic particles in the sand. Microplastic contamination is frequently ingested by marine organisms in the oceans. Some of this pollution is caused by littering, but much of it is caused by storms, water runoff, and winds that transport plastic, both whole objects and microplastics, into our oceans. The largest source of secondary plastics in the environment is single-use plastics, which are plastic products that are used once and then discarded, such as straws. Now recently scientists discovered the first evidence of microplastics in freshly fallen snow in Antarctica, where they were found in significantly higher concentrations than previously documented in the surrounding oceans. As scientists broadened the breadth of their research on the spread of plastic debris, microscopic particles of the material continue to come up in unexpected places. The breakdown of items such as shopping bags and soda bottles is a well-known source of microplastic pollution in the ocean but these have recently been discovered to be swept up by the wind, reach the upper reaches of Mount Everest, build up in Arctic sea ice and snow, and accumulate in European agricultural soils. When Alex Aves, a PhD student at the University of Canterbury, embarked on a research mission to Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf in 2019, her colleagues did not anticipate the discovery of microplastics in the area. When Alex traveled to Antarctica in 2019, we were optimistic that she wouldn't find any microplastics in such a pristine and remote location said associate professor in environmental physics Dr. Laura Revel. We asked her to collect snow off the Scott Base and McMurdo Station roadways, so she'd have at least some microplastics to study. 
When she returned to the lab with snow samples, the team studied them using a technique known as Micro Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy and discovered some disheartening results. These inspections revealed microplastics in the Ross Ice Shelf snow samples, as well as in all of the samples obtained at all sites throughout the voyage. The researchers discovered an average of 29 microplastic particles per liter of snow, which is higher than previously recorded concentrations in the surrounding Ross Sea and Antarctic sea ice. The concentration was three times greater in samples collected surrounding the research bases. Thirteen distinct types of plastic were discovered in the samples, with PET being the most common, being used in soda bottles and apparel. Looking back now, I'm not at all surprised, said Revel. From the studies published in the last few years we've learned that everywhere we look for airborne microplastics, we find them. While there is still much to understand about the consequences of microplastic contamination, Preliminary research has revealed some alarming possibilities. These include harming marine organisms' growth, reproduction, and cognitive ability, causing harmful effects on human cells, and probable linkages to high cholesterol and heart disease. The presence of microplastics in Antarctic snowfall suggests that it is nearly impossible to escape such hazards no matter where you are. Earlier we told you about the Mars meteorites found in the Antarctic. Now recently researchers stumbled upon some other interesting space rocks in this secluded region. But these aren't from Mars, they originated from the Moon. Moon rocks are always interesting objects to study for scientists. But not only the rocky materials themselves, but also the gas trapped inside those moon rocks is just as intriguing as the rock itself. A new study of six lunar meteorites discovered in Antarctica has provided the first conclusive evidence that the Moon received chemical ingredients from the Earth's interior. The discovery lends credence to the huge impact idea, which holds that our planet's most enduring partner was created when something massive slammed into the Earth in the distant past. Patrizia will discover evidence of helium and neon, both noble gases that seldom link to other elements and six lunar meteorites from NASA's Antarctic collection while conducting PhD research at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. The meteorites are made of basalt, a volcanic rock created when magma welled up from the moon's interior and rapidly cooled. This chilling process resulted in the formation of lunar glass particles within the samples, which preserve chemical traces of solar gases. Finding solar gases, for the first time, in basaltic materials from the moon that are unrelated to any exposure on the lunar surface was such an exciting result, will said in a statement. The discovery supports the theory that the moon was formed by a massive impact and the effort could pave the way for further research into how the solar system's rocky worlds evolved. According to one version of the massive impact theory, a protoplanet called Theia collided with Earth roughly 4.5 billion years ago, about 60 million years after the Earth formed. The impact must have been large enough to send ejecta from Earth's innards into orbit and consolidate into another body, rather than falling back down to our young planet. Other evidence supporting this theory includes the fact that the Moon is lightweight, with little iron in its interior but the Earth's iron-rich core contains 30% of its mass. The Moon's mantle rocks are comparable in composition to those on Earth, yet they differ greatly from Martian meteorites. To conduct the study, scientists required a somewhat smaller impact. The Moon is continually battered by asteroids because it lacks the dense atmosphere of Earth to burn up space debris. It was most likely a high-energy impact from such an asteroid that pulled out rock fragments from deep within a big lava flow on the Moon. These fragments finally fell to Earth as meteorites, and scientists discovered them against the stark white of Antarctica. Because the current analysis focused on just a few of NASA's collection of over 70,000 meteorites, the researchers believe that scientists' understanding of far more than the Moon would benefit from the team's work. I am strongly convinced that there will be a race to study heavy noble gases and isotopes in meteoritic materials," Henner Busemann, a geochemist at ETH Zurich, said in the same statement. He believes that researchers will soon be going to meteorites to locate other noble gases that are more difficult to identify than helium and neon, such as xenon and krypton. While such gases are not necessary for life, it would be interesting to know how some of these noble gases survived the brutal and violent formation of the Moon, Busemann said. Such knowledge might help scientists in geochemistry and geophysics to create new models that show more generally how such most volatile elements can survive planet formation in our solar system and beyond. Because Antarctica is covered with ice, you'd think everything would be gleaming white, right? However, striped icebergs, some with bright hues like candy, can be found in Antarctica, where they stand out from the surrounding terrain. So, how do these candy-colored icebergs come to be? Icebergs form when enormous chunks of ice break away from glacier ice shelves and begin to float in open water. Because the glaciers were built up over millennia by snow falling on the Antarctic continent, these gigantic slabs of ice contain clean, fresh water. It becomes supercooled and solidifies to the ice shelf space. Because this fresh ice is generated from seawater including organic matter minerals, 
it gives the iceberg a riot of hues and textures. The diverse colored layers generate beautiful patterns when the bugs break into shapes sculpted by the wind and waves. Striped icebergs come in a variety of colors. Visitors to Antarctica have seen brown, black, yellow, and blue ice. The colors tell a tale because they show how the ice formed. A regular iceberg appears white because the small bubbles trapped within it scatter light in all directions. When a crack in the ice sheet fills up with meltwater and freezes so swiftly that no bubbles form, blue stripes form. Ice with no bubbles has a blue tinge, which is caused by the same phenomena that tints the sky. Blue light's wavelength enables it to be scattered or spread out far more than other colors. When an iceberg falls into the sea, a layer of salty seawater on the underside can freeze. If this is rich in algae, it can form a green stripe of a color like brown, black, or yellow. Of course, by sediment carried downward by the ice sheet as it floats towards the sea. The world was a harsh place long before our time, and Antarctica bears witness to these extraordinarily difficult times. Consider yourself approximately 9,000 years ago, when many of your forefathers wore animal skins rather than the comfortable textiles we have today. Tell us what you think about these amazing discoveries in the comments below.